Okay, hello. Um, thank you for joining my session. Um, it will be about practical library design lessons learned from Twitter 4G. My name is Yusuke Yamamoto, um, software developer from Tokyo, and uh, I'm a creator of Twitter 4G. Um, please follow me on GitHub, Twitter, or whatever. Although I, I don't tweet that much in English, but you can translate it, translate my Japanese tweets. And uh, it's an honor for me to be invited to speak at this conference. Um, Denmark is a very special place for me because I grew up in Copenhagen until uh, four years old. And I managed to visit the home where I grew up uh, for the first time in 36 years. And this is the house where I grew up until four. And they are the current residents. And anyway, so um, it's about Twitter 4G. I, I just want to know uh, who has ever tried Twitter 4G. One, two, three. Okay, you guys deserve stickers. And just to clarify, uh, who, who, who knows Twitter 4G is? You don't <laughs> several of them. Okay, just to clarify on. Um, Twitter 4J is a library for the Twitter API. Well, Twitter API is an HTTP-based uh, web REST API. And Twitter 4J is a wrapper library for that. And I've been working for on the project over a decade. And uh, its license is a patch license. And uh, I once was an employee of Twitter, but um, I studied the project years before I joined Twitter, so it has been always a, a non-commercial project. And Twitter 4J is known to be easy to use. Everyone says, well, it was easy, easier than expectation or something like that. And it is uh, very widely adopted, the num number of downloads per month is around 80,000, according to Sonatype, to the repository manager. I'll show you how easy it is. Let's, let me show you a code. Here I have IntelliJ IDEA. And let's say get single What I'm going to write is a code which searches the Twitter timeline, and uh, I'm, going I'm going to search for a tweet that contains JDK IO in the text, and just print that, print them. Get singleton and Twitter dot search new query. I'm going to search a query. Tweet contains JDK IO. And assign to a uh, variable called JDK IO and JDK IO get tweets and it is over and tweet get user get screen name and white space and tweet read, get text, just like that. And now, now I see the latest, uh, I think tw 20 tweets contains JDK IO in the text. So this is Twitter 4G. And there are many projects using Twitter 4G, including uh, MasterCard, LinkedIn, and of course Twitter. And believe it or not, um, Facebook is also using Twitter 4G. I think they they are or they have been using Twitter 4G for their Android app. In short, um, it's an awesome library. 
And speaking of library design, uh, what kind of design makes a library awesome? And of course, um, API comes first, API matters. Um, awesome libraries come with awesome APIs. Well, I'm, I mean, in most cases, uh, I can easily name ex exceptions, but um, usually people say it's an awesome library, awesome API. Uh, uh, it, they say the library is awesome. The API should be awesome. Um, but uh, you should be also mindful of promotion and user experience to make libraries awesome. So in this talk, I'm going to cover these three topics which made Twitter4j awesome, or which will make your libraries even more awesome. Okay, let's start with API. And what makes an API awesome? Some people will say um, an API is awesome because it is testable. Well, the API is awesome because it's modular. Well, the API is awesome because it's very extensible. Or you will say an API is awesome uh, when you can use it without any clue. Or uh, I will say the API is awesome because it's applying many design patterns in it. Which of these is most important, you think? Well, of course, it, it depends. W and speaking of Twitter4j, I found the API 11 years ago. I was very excited because uh, it's uh, the API is very simple, but at the same time, uh, the possibility is infinite. You can tweet, you can search, you can interact with others, oh, you can tweet achievements or something like that. So I started working on the API and see what I can do with the API. But, but I find found some difficult difficulties, like, uh, of course, I need to uh, send a HTTP request and I need to parse the response XML or JSON, and then create an um, uh, object representation for, for the response. And it turns out that the, the API returns so many different uh, types of uh, responses, like uh, tweet, or user, direct message, or friendship, or something like that. And so I thought that that mankind require a, a common library for that. Theta for this job is to send um, HTTP requests uh, to the server and pass the response and convert convert the response into Java re representation. Uh, there's no more or no, no less. So it's such a primitive library. Uh, there's no rocket science in it. It is supposed to be designed for everyone. So, uh, wh wh if it's a library for scientists or uh, professional, highly skilled programmer, um, um, the the library design could be more sophisticated or complicated or more modular. But I intentionally made made. Twitter for it super simple. So the API design is mostly about Yagni. Uh, you ain't not gonna need it, which means keep it simple uh, as uh, keep it as simple as possible. And I try to avoid design pattern patterns as much as possible. And I design Twitter for J as less as object oriented. Why? Um, and again, uh, because it's a library for everyone. And everyone includes, not everyone in this room, but everyone means every single Java programmer. 
And uh, I believe you, you didn't have no an, any problem with design, dealing with design patterns or object-oriented object uh, programming. Programmings. But uh, there are many novice programmers who are not familiar with design patterns, you know. So, mm, of course, this principle uh, may not be applicable for your library, but you should be always uh, keep in mind that uh, who will be using your library. Um, and here's the example code uh, to make API calls or using a very in initial version of Twitter 4J. Uh, it just prints the numeric ID of my account. First, firstly, I instantiate the Twitter object, and then I call the method called show user with parameter Yusuke. And then I print the uh, response of get, get ID. Very clear, right? But uh, some people may think that, uh, well, I would uh, apply a factory pattern for insta instantiation so that uh, we can hide the uh, instantiation pro process. Or you might think that uh, show, you show user doesn't sound right. It should be get user because it's Java. But I didn't introduce factory pattern just because, as I mentioned, it's a library for everyone. And initially, I didn't need any factory for that. Later on, actually, I, uh, there, there was a necessar necessary for uh, the factory pattern. So I introduced Twitter factory later. But for the initial version, I didn't need it. And yes, uh, get, sound, get user sounds uh, straightforward, uh, but I named it show user. Why? And I'll, I'll cover that later. And here's a, another code uh, that tweets first. And then right after that, it deletes the tweet. I call update status hello world, and then I will call destroy status. And in this case, uh, it is natural to implement um, delete or maybe remove method to the status class. Status is a representation of one single tweet. But I didn't implement uh, delete method to status class. Why? Uh, it's because, again, it's a wrapper library um, of the Twitter API. Uh, the primary documentation um, which developers will refer for the, uh, on the, uh, the, the primary documentation the developer will refer uh, is the one from Twitter, not the javadoc of Twitter 4J. So I chose to make those uh, method, method names uh, predictable from those um, endpoint URLs. So um, this fact, um, this, these odd naming uh, conventions, uh, is just uh, Twitter for just specific ones. But when you design your library's API, um, you need to think about the target user. If the library is for very uh, specific uh, people, like internal use, or it, if if it's a library for scientists or something like that, and keep in mind that uh, it's not always uh, the best to apply design patterns, and you should be also aware that um, that very straightforward design in Java might not be straightforward in polyglot environment. In this case, uh, it's Java and as well as um, REST API. But these days, you will mix many languages like Java, JavaScript, Ruby, Python. 
you might mix, mix up many multiple technologies in it. In that case, you are not living in Java-only world. So, name a correct one. Next, promotion. Well, um, have you ever seen a developer like saying, oh, well, hey, I created a Supreme library feature I'm going to uh, publish on GitHub, and people will gonna love it. Okay, and a week after that, he he says that, well, that that's weird. What what is weird? What are what are, what are you talking about? Well, um, it's been a week since I published the uh, project on GitHub, but it seems that nobody is using it. And I, I haven't get, got um, any pull requests so far. Well, it, that's not weird. Uh, people won't use your library or project uh, just because your library is on GitHub. Even the library has an awesome API, of course. And you should stop, stop being arrogant or, and wake up. You, you should realize uh, that nobody's watching you. And you should promote your library. And people will use your library when they are, they are aware of the project when they need it. Or they will pick up your library when they manage to uh, find it in the first place. So what I have done with Twitter4j is to promote it on blog and of course Twitter and a news site. Uh, it's a Japanese one called japanews.jp and again news site the server site.com dig, dizon and such so that uh, people are aware of my uh, library's existence. And if your library is for internal use, you may want to promote your uh, library in internal conference or SharePoint server or internal mailing list or Slack or whatever channels those uh, potential users will look at. And then in case how people are still not uh, aware of the project, even they need it. Uh, they will search for a solution on the internet, uh, I guess. And for the Google ability purpose, uh, it is of course important to have a dedicated website uh, for the project. Uh, and in, in addition to that, uh, the naming of the project uh, is also important. Uh, those product names like POI, Tomcat, or Eclipse, uh, are those uh, for those who already know the project. Uh, and if you, are, if you are Mark Reinhold or James Gosling, uh, Donald Trump or Justin Bieber or whatever, uh, if you are any of those, uh, you don't care about the naming. People will be aware of that because they, everybody is watching you. But uh, today we don't have Donald Trump here, I think, because he is in an important meeting. And so we'd better have a more explicit or predictable or straightforward name. Uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the, this kind of Twitter 4 j like straightforward name. I, I, would, uh, I want, want it to be more creative. But uh, I intentionally named it very straightforward way. And then people will find it on the internet easily. Well, in, in many cases, uh, if you want to do something with, uh, on, on Java, you will, you will look for the keyword and Java. Or I will look for a library for tw the Twitter API, I will look for Twitter 4G. And they, they find my library. 
So far, and I covered uh, API design and promotion strategy. But um, even if your library has got uh, an awesome API and you manage to promote your library correctly, um, people may not use the library if the user experience isn't good enough. Here are items which I think important to improve uh, using ex experience of a library. And the most important thing is easy to get started. When you find a correct library for your task, um, but if you don't know how to get started, probably you are not going to use it. So, um, well, in mo most cases, you, you, you will look into the website or Javadoc, or people will say, well, uh, JUnit is the best uh, example uh, to see how to use the library. But, but test case is test case. It's not an e example. So I would suggest you to uh, write example code, a minimal one. And the Twitter API consists of um, over 100 endpoints. And Twitter 4J covers most of uh, them. And, and I also bundle uh, minimal example codes for every single end endpoint, along with uh, launch scripts for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Of course, uh, documentation is very important, but as you know, um, uh, when you update the code, the, there could be incons inconsistency be between your code and your documentation. But if you have a good example code, you will n uh, it will never be inconsistent because we are using a statically typed language called Java. Next is easy to troubleshoot. You find a correct library, you find a correct way to use it, and then you have problem. You need to dig into it. And since Twitter 4J is such a primitive, primitive library and it's easy to use library, there are so many uh, requests to troubleshoot their problems. What I have done is to uh, embed the version string in the exception. Well, there are many uh, products using that, but, but it, again, it, it's very important. Well, it's because mo many problems are already solved by the latest version. So when people ask me, oh, hey, I, I'm, I get this exception, and how do we get how do I get rid of it? And then I will ask him, what is your, the version of Twitter 4J you are using? And then he, his response is like, hey, um, uh, it's a very important project, and I need to solve it uh, today. Please help. Well, and what is your version of your Twitter 4J again? And I don't get the version string, version. So I uh, include the version string in the ex exception structure. It is very important. And um, one more thing, which is unique to Twitter 4J, is um, including a fingerprint in exception structure. This one and this one. This fingerprint is um, calculated from the struct struct trace itself. The, the, there are two fingerprints. The former one is, I think, uh, calculated from the uh, struct, uh, struct, uh, class name and method name. And the second, second one is, um, consists of a class name, method name, and line number. Because most of all stack trace uh, looks the same. If the version 
differs, and the the those, those structures look the same. The the you might notice that there are several differences, like a line number is different, but the structure is the same. And so um, when I throw um, exception, Twitter exception, or Twitter runtime exception, I uh, calculate uh, those thing, uh, hash, hash code or uh, fingerprint from the stack trace. And then people can just click the link to find the answer. There might not be an answer on the in internet if the exception is the very first one, but um, in, in most cases, some, somebody have uh, already posted on the internet. It could be uh, on the on Stack Overflow. It could be in the uh, mailing list of Twitter 4J. And that's how I uh, improve the sub, sub, uh, improve or how I avoid supporting those novice users. And and supported platform is also uh, important. Initially, Twitter 4G supports supported uh, Java 1.4 to Java 6, and currently. Uh, it supports Java 5 or late, later. Um, well, I, I guess Java 8 uh, is your primary uh, choice for production systems. But uh, if you aim to stretch the number of users, consider supporting older versions of JVM, as well as the, late, the latest version. But um, I actually, I, I don't suggest you to support uh, Java 1.4 in this <laughs> era because it, it's got no extend this loop or it, there's no generics. Uh, you, it doesn't support annotations and there's no string builder or in in. Well, actually, there is a way to avoid some limitations uh, because uh, the Java compiler has a special switch called uh, target JSL 14. Uh, with the switch, you can target uh, Java 1.4, even you are using uh, Java 8 or latest version of uh, Java. But of course, you, you can not use uh, APIs, classes uh, available later than Java 5. But you can still uh, use extended loop or generics or annotations like um, o override or something like that. But but uh, well well I would suggest you to support Java five or later. Of course, there there are very few people using uh, those older versions of Java JVMs. But but those enterprise. Uh, pr projects uh, are still on Java 5 or Java 6 when they are using WebLogic server or WebSphere. When I when I uh, cut the support for Java 1.4, uh, I, I thought that it, it's already gone and nobody's using it. But there are so many requests to keep supporting uh, to keep support Java 1.4. So try uh, as hard as you can. And then uh, in addition to JVM versions, um, Twitter 4 j also covers uh, Google's App Engine. And as, as far as I know, Google App Engine is using, using OpenJDK, and uh, most headless libraries work out of the box. But the pl platform is providing a special API to connect to HTTP servers uh, efficiently and asynchronously. So Twitter 4J can take advantage of uh, that with a supplementary Java file, um, making it possible to call uh, the API, the, the Twitter API, I mean, asynchronously, and evaluate the response lazily. 
if you are interested in the implementation, you can take a look at it. And next, Android. Well, uh, supporting Android platform was actually painful um, because it's not a uh, Java certified platform and there are many incompatibilities. I'm, I'm not covering the techniques to support Android platform today, but uh, uh, if you want Android developers to use your library, uh, be aware that there might be difficulties. There might not be, but if you hit those bugs or incompatibility, it's painful. Like uh, it's embedded JSON person and the XML person has several bugs. Uh, it ha had several bugs. I suppose it's already gone. And uh, when you uh, deal with HTTP server from your program, you, you might use um, HTTP URL connection or Apache HTTP client. And the HTTP, HTTP URL connection behaves uh, differently from the certified version of Java. And they have tweaked. Uh, actually, Android platform comes with uh, Apache's HTTP client library, but they have made some tweaks in it. So the behavior is, again, a little bit different. And um, I was using Base64 encoder uh, for en encoding um, basic, basic authentication header or OAuth signatures. But um, the Base64 encoder in, is in some mis mixed package, which means it's not a standard API. Um, but it's always there as long as they are, uh, as long as you are using Sun or Oracle certified JDK. Um, well, actually, it it's not uh, available anymore from Java 9, I think, but it it used to be there. But Android platform doesn't have those packages, so I need to make make some uh, modification. Next, um, dependency. Oops. Well, from from user point of view, it's always to it's always good to have uh, fewer dependencies. Uh, you might have been annoyed by version conflicts, like. Uh, one library A is depending on uh, Apache HTTP client version X, and the other library uh, B is depending on Apache HTTP cli client version Y, and uh, Apache HTTP client version Y is not backward compatible with version X or something like that. In that case, you um, may need to give up using uh, one of those libraries. And it happens a lot. And believe, believe it or not, uh, there are so many developers uh, who have no idea how to configure class path correctly. They like they just put all libraries into uh, JREXlib or something, some, some sort of directory, or something like that. And they will get no class they found error error and what is that and I'm I'm done with supporting those those developers. So uh dependency is always causing problems. And Twitter four J is trying to avoid those problems by not depending on external libraries. All you need is just one single Java file called Twitter four J core. And there are, there are a number of libraries I could use mm, to implement Twitter 4J, but I intentionally avoid using them and implemented um, generic and simple HTTP client and base64 base encoder to, to support Android platform. And, and 
uh, and all sig signature gen generator generator from scratch. Actually, there is a library called well, what what is that? Signpost or something like that. But I created an OAuth library by myself. So uh, I avoided using those libraries to maximize the user the user experience. But don't don't take me wrong. I'm I'm not telling you that you should always uh, implement everything from scratch or reinvent wheel. But I'm telling you that uh, you need to depend on external libraries with extreme uh, caution. Think about that. You really need it or not. And and uh, writing a parser is not my favorite task, so I use an ex existing one, but I changed the, changed the package and embed it into the jar file to avoid further conflicts. And Twitter4j is not depending on any external libraries, but it doesn't mean Twitter4j doesn't support external libraries. You can use any flavor of logging libraries, and optionally, um, you can uh, use uh, a library called OKHTTP. Uh, it's a library that allow, allows you to connect with the uh, Twitter API uh, with HTTP2 protocol, which will uh, maximize the performance. So uh, Twitter4j is still flexible. You can uh, choose any logging libraries. I, I'm, I'm, I hate to use those uh, libraries depending on certain logging libraries um, because I, I want to, I, I don't want to configure uh, log4j XML and SL4j and log back or something like that. So I, I want to stick to one logging library. So I would suggest you to do the same, not depending on certain logging library. Uh, the question is, uh, how how do I Im implement that? Uh, how, well, e well, yes. Uh, I look for those libraries existence, and um, I really don't remember the exact implementation. But yes, um, I, I use the Recle reflection API to find those library existence, and and uh, and I also have a wrap wrapper for for that. I think. So there, it's more dy dynamic. A little bit, but it's not that complex. And then community. Um, when you have a library, uh, there should be a community for, the, for that. It could be uh, Slack, it could be Stack Overflow, in my case, uh, there is a mailing list, and just uh, answer politely and quickly as much as I, I can. Um, I tried to avoid saying, oh, hey, Google is your friend. But, uh, but initially, it, it is really difficult. There are a number of questions like, hey, I." I don't want. I, I want to use the library, but I get no cross defined error. Or uh, uh, how can I tweet uh, from my Android ap application? Or how do I configure class bus for my Android application? Or, well, actually, there are so many Android re re related questions, which is not specific to Twitter for J. But I didn't uh, avoid ans answering that. Well, I you may you may want to add the jar file into the lib directory or something like that. And then you will find the community will be more uh, peaceful place and people start uh, responding on behalf of you. 
And then uh, if you s response like, hey, who is your friend, or it's a known, uh, it's a frequently asked question, or you, you can Google it or something like that, people will stop uh, asking questions in, in the community. So welcome those, you should welcome those um, sometimes uh, uh, crazy questions, but uh, it will be imp improved in the future. And well, so um, I'm as I mentioned, um, uh, designing a good library is not only about API, but you should also taking care of how to promote your library and how your users will uh, experience. And um, those are from my experience about Twitter 4G, but uh, there's uh, many things you can uh, use for your own library, I think. And um, any questions? Oh, how long did it take to um, the actual user f from my library? Well, it didn't take that much because uh, it, it was two, 2007 and uh, the number of Twitter users were in increasing dramatically. And once I published the library on, on the internet, there were so many users uh, diving, diving in. Well, I think in a in a month I I got hundreds of users. I think. Oh, how how do I keep keep backward compatibility? Well, uh, of course I uh, took extreme care to make the library backward compatible, but of course. Uh, the, there are many changes uh, on the Twitter API side, and which could uh, break the compatibility. But, but um, if I could, uh, I didn't break the compatibility. But uh, wh when I need to break the compatibility, I will uh, f uh, increase the uh, version string and say, hey, there will be a uh, incompatibility and you'll need to migrate from this method to this method or something like that. Just like other libraries. And and unfortunately there is a huge changes com uh, coming in the Twitter API and I'm going to break everything <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> okay, I, I'll try. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, well, um, there was any legal issues about Twitter 4G. Well, uh, they are friendly enough uh, not complaining about the tra trademark. Well, uh, I, didn't, I didn't do anything malicious with Twitter 4G. So, and and it, since it's a, it's a non-commercial pro project, uh, so far they didn't claim anything. And... Uh, when I was working for twi Twitter, um, I was allowed to work on the lab project, of course. But when when um, they they might complain me when I start selling this sticker, <laughs> it's a mixture of Duke and the twi Twitter bird. But uh, I, I give give these stickers for free. Ah uh, well, the one one issue uh, is that uh, as I mentioned, I I'm em embedding a JSON library in it, and JSON, j the library is uh, implemented by Douglas Clark Ford, Ford, who invented 
who, um, who invented JSON format itself. And the initial library is from him. Not, not this one. Oh, JSON. JSON. Mm. I think this this one, and it's it has a special license. Mm. Here, it is based on the MIT license, but he has this line in it: this, "The software shall be used for good, not evil." Well, this. Uh, some people say, well, I'm not sure I'm using this for good or evil. Evil. So uh, this, is, uh, not, this is not a standard uh, open source license, so uh, people suggest me avoiding uh, it, it. So I'm thinking of um, replacing the library, more OSS compatible library. But, but so far, uh, I don't have any uh, major issues with trademarks or legal issues. Any more questions? Okay. Oops. Oops. <laughs> okay. That, that's all for me. I hope you learned so anything, something new from my talk. Thank you.